Greetings everyone. This is an earthquake watch for October 11 and 12. We have seen a significant increase in earthquake activity the last 24 hours after a fairly quiet time, um, October 6 and 7. This could be due to significant CME that was recorded on the 6th and large x-ray spike. We'll have a look at the SDO and the latest imagery and we can see two large coronal features on the sole corona and we can see them expiring and um, it seems to me that these events have passed um, the, the now period is about here so I'm thinking that this first event may have been the Papua New Guinea quake and this would have been the Halmahira Indonesian quake um, a day or so later so I'm thinking that um, we have to look ahead and this is the next coronal hole and also above which may be the um, very high reaches that we need to have a closer look at again. We'll have a look at some stills, some um, AIA-193 angstrom and the AIA-171 angstroms and we're going to have a look at the areas in play for October 11 and 12 and that's the area that I've got circled right here and it seems that there may be an active flux region forming underneath this as well to give that extra punch. Now the very high northern reaches um, we have had significant events yesterday in the Aleutian Islands uh, we're now still getting aftershocks and you could perceive these being aftershocks and it seems that we may be receiving uh, more um, coming up especially around this region and this looks to me like it could be around about the Russian Peninsula region more across the corner of the Pacific Ocean so we'll map this shortly but this is the main area of concern and this will be around about 23 to 26 degrees north and um, I'll plot this. We'll have a quick look at the one, uh, 171 angstrom as well although it's a little bit difficult to see the coronals um, are all over the place here. We get a fairly well defined look at the above region and we can see a distinct shapes and correlations with and there are a few other features that we need to look at in the southern hemisphere which could be for the next 24 hours I'll look at towards the end of the video. Okay, looking forward to the likely areas that could be receiving a large event and the first area that I have mapped is the Volcano Islands. I know I have mentioned this area um, quite significantly uh, the last few days, um, the last few videos and we could be receiving a large event here mainly due to the shape and size of this um, um, fault line which extends upwards although there isn't an, an upward reaching of this but we do see a little feature here that we need to take notice of so that is the first area mapped and possibly um, the most likely the volcano islands and the next mapped place would be the Gulf of California now there are a few fault lines here we need to be worried about the San Andreas and also the fault line um, around the Mexican region underneath now this is 23 degrees which will put this very dangerous fault line in play and we can see a, an array of 6.6 .6 quakes um, sitting in the middle and I'm thinking that we are going to be receiving a 5 sorry a 6.5 to 6.6 .6 event so it seems that there's a strong possibility that this this area may be affected now if we have a look at the shape of this we could see that on the uh, solar corona we do see a similar sort of um, feature here so although this is slightly ahead of time this uh, coronal hole may change shape based on what I'm looking at now it does look like these two regions that I've mapped um, it does seem that this region in the middle here is now starting to open up and we'll have a look at the moving imagery and that'll give us a better a better look and what we can see is that we see the initial fracture and collapse and then a further opening up in this region and which does indicate that the perhaps the epicenter of this event could be right in the center point which will be north 26 degrees and it does seem to be opening up in two different ways so we are seeing a few separate um, possibilities here but based on what I'm looking at now it does seem to be those two areas that I have mapped. Okay looking at the stills again I'm now focusing on the southern hemisphere and I don't perceive um, any events in the southern hemisphere to be um, too large although there is a coronal hole that has popped up the last 12 hours in the very low reaches and we'll get a better look in the 171 angstrom and we can see it here 
and the moving imagery will also give us a, an even better look. And we can see this, this coronal hole open up and it's in a now period. This is what I call the now period. So within the next um, 20 to 24 hours, I would expect a, a significant event in this region. And I will get Google Earth out. And the area I have targeted for the next 24 hours is the Sandwich Island region. Now we have had a few foreshocks in this region over the last seven days. And it does seem that this coronal hole is almost identical, almost identically mapped or perfectly symmetrical. And this tells me that um, this uh, trench could be activated now. So we could be seeing a lot of events in the near future. Now I'm expecting that we could be getting a six point zero or a five point five quake in this region and this is fairly well mapped and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the mapping on this um, about south fifty five to fifty eight degrees there is one other region that would be in play and that's the Macquarie Island region uh, this area does get some very large events and there is a fairly active fault line that extends right up through New Zealand and that would be my second area um, that would be at risk of, of an event. Again, I don't think it's going to be too large, um, upwards of 5.5 to a 6, and that should be it for the next 24 hours. And then the major watch would be for the California, uh, Gulf of California region, and the um, Volcano Islands. Okay, we'll have a look at the high reaches on the Northern Hemisphere and where we have seen the Aleutian Islands events and the aftershocks. Uh, we could be uh, moving into another period of seismic activity in this region and it looks more or less across the corner of the Pacific and I'm looking at this sort of angle to give me an indication of where it may be and it does seem to be um, predominantly land based event although there is a splitting in the two so there could be like two fault lines in play so I'll get Google Earth out again and map this and the area that's fairly accurate to this is the Kamchatka Peninsula. We did get a few events um, over the last three or four days in this region and it looks like that this may be activated and it seems to be that there's a, this is right in the corner of the Pacific as we can see it's um, north 55 degrees. I'm expecting it to be slightly higher than the Aleutian Islands. The Aleutian Islands was about 52 degrees or 51 degrees north. I'm thinking this one might be slightly higher so this would put this area in play and also the opposite side of the Pacific but I'm thinking this will be perhaps the more accurate region and there are um, an extensive amount of volcanoes in this region also and there's also a sea um, this is just around the Russian region Sea of Okhotsk um, I think I've pronounced it correctly um, that could also be in play so this will probably be after the um, main events which will be the um, October 11 and 12 this could possibly be um, a day or so later. So that'll be my earthquake watch for today and the main watch would be for October 11 and 12. Thanks for watching.